So the black fence you see behind me is a fence that we've been uh, slowly building around our property. It's a fence style we've been building uh, since we bought this place. This is my most recent uh, fencing job. It's starting to look a lot better. Things are a little more lined up. Some of my post spacing here is a little bad, but that was, I actually laid these posts a long time ago. Um, but I thought it would be fun. I did a video on uh, building board fences. I thought it would be done, fun to do a video on uh, my biggest mistakes of building these fences to explain a few things about how I construct them now and why we construct them the way, with the, the way that we do. So uh, sometimes the best thing to do is go back and look at the mistakes that we've made uh, to explain what we've learned along the way. A lot of what I'm gonna talk about in this video ironically has to do with materials and wood. Um, these are typical fence posts that you could buy from a lumber yard. And these actually came from a place called General Timber. The thing that I like about the General Timber posts, most of these came from General Timber. Um, here's one that came from General Timber. General Timber is a local uh, mill. And so they produce mainly fencing uh, posts, boards, materials. That's, that's, their, that's their specialty. So the first thing that I've noticed about their posts versus some of the other posts that we've used is the treatment. The treatment is substantially better than the posts that we were buying at Lowe's. While the cut isn't as smooth and uh, perfectly shaped, the posts are also thicker. They're just heavier duty. And I've noticed that when you put posts in the ground, the thicker the post, the more stable it is once it's, once it's in there. It might be a little harder to get in there, but it becomes more stable. So um, I definitely like the general timber posts better. And even though they're not completely uh, perfect in symmetry, once we put them in and we put the boards on them, we usually put a one by four in the front and you don't notice that, but they're a much stronger post than the ones that we were using. And the other thing so the ones from Lowe's, they're, they're real pretty, they're very symmetrical, but I've noticed that when we get them in the ground and they've been in the ground for a while, a lot of them have either cracked or warped. I think a lot of that has to do with their sizing. It also has a lot to do with their treatment and how much they were dried before they went into the ground. These posts go through a longer drying process than most of your big box store posts would. So if you're doing uh, fencing, I would buy your posts from a specialty uh, timber company that, that focuses on building fence posts because they're gonna be treating them and creating them um, better than what you're gonna buy at Lowe's. I think the posts that you could get at, say, a place like Tractor Supply are probably similar to these. In fact, some of these could be Tractor Supply posts. I bought these at auction. I'm not sure where all of them came from. I just know certain ones because they still have the general timber tag on them. But um, I, I just, I like the treatment process that uh, our local mill uses and I like buying locals and, and I, can, I know that I can trust what it is, that, the product that I'm buying there. So if I've done anything wrong with posts, I would say it starts with the material that I've used in the past, the, the, the the treatment is extremely important when it comes to posts. They're going into the ground. The next material mistake that I have made in the past are using um, what I call dollar boards. Now these are miscut boards from a local mill. They sell them for about a dollar. They're, they're one by sixes, but uh, they're untreated. And they're, they also have you know some rough edges on them. That's why they were a dollar. These boards were a really cheap idea and our boards have held up. They're, they're all up here, but th they feel after several years a lot drier than a lot of our other boards that we've purchased. And the, um, I mean, the paint soaked into them pretty well. It's starting to fade now. But I've also noticed that these boards tend to warp. We have a lot of warped boards along our fence line and, and, and they're, they're just drier and weaker. If I really wanted to, I could snap this board uh, just by pulling on it real hard. 
I'm not going to do that, but it's the quality of board in the dollar boards was not the, it, the savings weren't that great considering that you could get a, a nicely treated uh, 14 foot board for about seven dollars and for the amount of times that I would have to replace these dollar boards to make up for that um, I just I don't think it's worth it there's some I mean for some people it might be worth it and actually at the time that we did this we needed a fence up pretty quick so it was worth it but within a year a lot of these boards started warping. As we go through, we're gonna end up having to replace a lot of the ones along the roadway. Um, so don't cheap out on the boards. So there's a, there's a couple of mistakes here. Here we've got our Lowe's posts, and, and I mean, they're okay. I only had a problem with some of these posts, but we got ahead of ourselves. So we went out and bought a bunch of posts and we ran our line. Um, in, in some places, the posts have warped a little bit because they're, they don't have um, all the wood on them and, and rails to help keep them up upright and tight as they dry out. The other thing that we did is, and, and this is kind of like an impatient issue, we came back and ran wire before we could afford the boards um, and we stapled it to the posts. So it looks something like this and now the wire is covered in weeds, which uh, that's not that big of a deal. I kind of like the fact that you can't really see through here. I like that it's, um, I like that privacy hedge. But it's pulling off the wire because there's no boards to hold on the wire. So it's kind of, it's kind of a mess. Um, another mistake was that we put the wire on before we painted the, the posts. And coming back and painting these posts with the wire on it is a royal pain in the butt. So in order to fix this, I've got a lot of cleanup to do. And then I'm gonna have to restaple all this wire and then, um, and then put on the boards and paint the boards. I mean, it, it, there's a process that I'm gonna have to go through to get this back the way that we want it. Um, it's unfortunate, but there's nothing we can do about it now. So this is another fence where we've, we've done some things correctly and some things incorrectly. Um, one thing that we did correctly here is the way that we uh, ran our posts, we actually tied strings between the posts and then held the posts up to them to make sure that we were getting them right. And I, th I thought we did that on some of our other areas, but for whatever reason, this particular fence came out straighter than all of our other fences. So we definitely improved in the way that we were laying our posts. We used general timber fence boards. And these boards are, were put in in 2014. So these boards are four years old and they're still solid boards but i made another mistake we did this in a rush we put this fence up we painted the posts we did not paint the boards before we put the boards up so getting behind the boards to paint where they attach the fence is going to be a pain in the butt but it, it's doable um, the other thing i didn't do is i didn't come back across the front and put in my one by fours and you would think that just nailing the boards to the posts is enough but that one by four across the front of these is a very important structural component of building a fence that um, I'm shooting myself for on this fence now, because what happens is these boards will, as they dry and they will warp, um, they, they didn't warp as bad as our front boards, but all boards uh, tend to want to warp somewhat. But if you look here, this board has kind of popped out and up. If that one by four were down across here, it wouldn't have been able to do that. I've got a couple of spots further down where a board is twisted. The one by four is kind of coming in and, and going down in the center of the boards as well as the, the ends of the boards. You can see where the two ends in this solid one through. Um, those one by fours would keep the board from being able to really twist a whole lot. It, it, there's definitely a reason for, for taking multiple steps and multiple layers of putting your wood onto your fence to prevent as much bowing and flexing and twisting and turning as possible on the boards 
while also keeping the fence intact and not letting things come unnailed and come undone. So this fence needs some work to get cleaned back up again. It's not horrible. It's something that I can do, but it's not, it's not ideal that we didn't paint these boards before putting them up. It's not ideal that I'm gonna have to go back and fix some of the boards that have been able to pull out and pop out of place before I go back and put my one by fours on it. Um, the other thing that I didn't do back here, and it's not as big of a problem back here, but it's been a problem in other places, is um, not angling the back of the fence posts. That's, that's pretty critical. It allows the water to run off and you paint the top of it so that um, it, when water sits on the top of these posts, that's where you can start getting the posts to dry out a little more, a little more warping, a little more bending. Um, so that is another problem that I've noticed with this fence. So a lot of the problems that I've run into with fencing, they, they all seem to be related to a couple things. Number one, cheap materials. Cheap materials don't work. When we buy fencing now, we wait until we have the money to buy the good materials and we only deal with the good materials because it's not worth it to have to come back and fix things later. The, the general timber wood that we've been using is 10 times more solid than the dollar boards we were using. Um, and as it dries out and gets older, it, it almost feels harder. And I think that's just the treatment process. The other thing is just your project planning. So the last stretch of fence I did, we, we, we had the posts in and those weren't ideal. But when we went to do the boards and the wire, um, we did the wire and we came back, we put, we put the boards up, we painted the boards before we put them on, we did the one by fours, we built that entire section of fence all at once to make it just stay together, solid, it's a completed product, uh, and things aren't gonna start falling off of it because we didn't complete it. Try to get ahead of yourself just to get your fence line extended for whatever reason. Um, it could benefit you if, if it's just a short-term thing, but if you end up going for six months without finishing it, you're gonna start having problems. You, you can't get ahead of yourself on a fencing project. It's better to build a completed fence in sections than to try and run all your posts, go back, run all your wire, go back, run all your boards, go back, run all your one by fours, go back, cut the tops off. Instead of doing that at different times, it's better to be able to do all of that at once and do less fencing than to try and stretch yourself thin, not be able to get the materials, not complete the job, and then try and go back to it six months to a year later. That just doesn't work. If you're building fences, you know as much as I do that the, these are expensive projects. So when you have to go back and, and fix something that you did a couple years ago, um, when it should have lasted much longer than that, that's an expense that you can't afford to make down the road and you have to keep that in mind now as you start building your fence. If you're concerned about not having the money to do the whole thing all the way down, um, like we had talked about running just two boards all the way down, but the boards would be warped and out of place by the time we finish the rest of the fence. If you're concerned about not having the materials to, to do a long enough section fence, I, you just have to develop some patience for this. If you pace yourself and you start now, you're eventually gonna get to the finish line. Very few people, other than large operations, can afford to just build <laughs> fencing on farms. It's expensive, it's a lot of wood. So that's, those are some of the mistakes that we have made in um, putting up fence that I think are uh, shareable. And, and they all come down to materials, construction time, and project management. If you handle your project correctly, you're getting the right materials, you shouldn't run into some of these simple mistakes that we've made. And, we, and when we started this, this, this is one of our first fences, we were kind of new to the game um, and we were learning as we went. Now we know, okay, if we're gonna do a section of fence, we've gotta do the whole thing, we've gotta knock it out right, or it's not, it's not gonna hold up for more than a few months. Stay tuned, I'll probably be doing another uh, fence video on 
constructing fences. Now that we've learned a lot more, I'll get more into detail of the structural elements of the fence and what to consider. Um, if you haven't already, we, we do have a, a fence building video that's up. A lot of those principles are the same. Uh, if you look at what we did there and then you take into consideration some of the, um, some of the mistakes that we've made, uh, you could put two and two together and see what I'm talking about.